Hello everyone and welcome back to part 20 of my Learn Ethical Hacking course. In this part I'm going to show you things to look out for when downloading applications. So this is onto more of the cybersecurity side of due diligence and watching out for certain things. So like I said, cybersecurity and ethical hacking is a lot of your own, like I said, due diligence. So basically it's up to you and how you handle situations what you do to look out for things and how you can prevent them so it's up to you really you can't just ignore things you've got to be wary yourself so it's it can be a little bit confusing to the person who doesn't really know much about computers but hopefully this video should clear a, a few things up if you're not really familiar so i'm on the sandbox windows 10 machine so this is not my separate laptop like in the hacking demo this is just a virtual machine running windows 10 and if you remember from this course we created car image exe.jpg so if you followed the video and created your own one then you should have your own um, payload but it looks like a image apart from the icon because the icon didn't resize properly but it still looks like an image because you get a preview like this is a real image and this is a fake one. So you see the .jpg, .jpg extension. So it sort of mimics a real image. But the thing you can do to look out for this is if you go to properties and I'll open properties on both. So as you can see straight away it says type of file application. But on the real image, so this is the real image, which is this one here, it says JPEG. So GPG. So you know straight away that this is an actual image file. But if you look at this one, it says type of file application.exe. Even though it's got .jpeg at the end, it still says application. So you can go to details and see the description and the type of file it is. And if you go to details on the image, let me scroll down, as you can see, it's got dimensions and pixels. So as you can see, there's much more detail with the image that goes into detail about like the pixels, the height, etc. But on the application, it doesn't. So these are a few things to look out for. Um, the size is another thing. So as you can see here the size is only 150 kb but on this one it's 956 kb so for an image depending on obviously the size and the quality now if you go to like 4k images then yes that will be higher but the average is around 100 kb for an image so this is a lot larger which is unusual and the other thing you can check out for if you go to your windows 10 machine and type resource monitor we open resource monitor then we can actually monitor connections coming in and out of this computer so as you can see we're on the browser here so let's go to Facebook and if we go to Facebook and we go to back to this resource resource manager or monitor we go to network then you can see all the outgoing connections so if you can see here Microsoft Edge cp.exe now there's remote addresses so if you run the payload if we run this payload let's just run it now it's not going to work and it's not going to listen for a connection because we haven't got our Kali machine open now the image is still going to open if we close that now and we go back to our um, resource monitor as you can see there's car image exe.jpg but if you noticed here it says remote address and it's got a port now it's running port 80 because that's what we told the payload to do but if you noticed here it's got temp backdoor.exe and it's also got car image.jpg so this is the payload and as you can see the the remote address is an ip address yes the remote port is 80 so that's not really suspicious however the remote address is the most suspicious part because it's sending a connection out to 192.168.110.128 now that's the ip address on my Kali machine and just to prove this in a way if we go to facebook so let me just refresh the 
refresh the browser and we look for Microsoft Edge. So we've got a few remote addresses from Microsoft Edge, which is the browser that I'm running here. And it's using port 443. So if you wanted to make your payload use 443, that's absolutely fine to make it less suspicious. 80 is fine and 8080 is also okay. But it's the remote address. So if we open CMD, and because we're on Facebook, I'm going to ping Facebook to get the IP address of the server. So ping facebook.com. So it's going to just ping it. Press Control C to stop that. And as you can see here, there's an IP address of the server that we were pinging. So this is the IP address of Facebook. Now this may be different for you depending on where you live, the area and the closest server to you. But for me it's 31.13.90.36. And if you notice here, the IP address is, corresponds to this. So that proves that we are actually connected to Facebook and it's genuine. The local address is just your IP address. But like I said, the um, the one with the image, if I can just find it, I think it's closed itself. But if we re I might reopen it and show you, but you've seen it. If it shows you, um, it's gone off because we weren't actually listening for connection, so it just dies after a few seconds. But you've just got to look out for the remote address, and if it's not the same address as a website server, and if you don't type, if you type this in and go and get the IP address of the website you're on. So this could change if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, it'll change if you're on Google, but it's got to correspond. So you can just do a little test by typing ping and then the URL, then you'll get the IP address and make sure it corresponds to the remote address down here the, on whatever application you are using. So this will change for Chrome. If you're using Chrome, I think it'll just say chrome.exe, but you get the idea. So that was it for this short video. If it did help, please leave a like, comment if you're stuck with anything. I'll be happy to help. Subscribe for future content and I will see you in the next video.